laptop to fit it all on because I thought it was quite a good resource to have. But so the first thing I'm really going to do is we're going to work, we're going to work again very big. We're going to be using paint to begin with. And I want to just start by getting some water onto the surface. With textured paint, you, you can, it takes even more water to kind of get the paper saturated because it's much just that bit thicker and chunkier. So the first minute is going to be invisible painting just to get that surface alive and get it some movement on it because we want to we're going to work really we're just going to see this image as really big areas of shadow and light at the moment the features are going to come really slowly so I want to think first of all about it in a very loose very kind of abstract way definitely nothing I'm not going to go in and start trying to do all those construction lines around a face I'm trying not to see this as a face I'm trying to see it as um and areas of green and, and, and we're going to be doing obviously rather a lot of green paint today so I'm going to start by just putting some paint on the surface I'm not even going to think about the shape of the face to begin with I'm just going to put green onto my surface because I want to start breaking it up and seeing the surface and the texture and how it's going to move coming through I'm using quite a yellowish green there's a lot of yellow in these tones so this isn't going to be a day for your um, sea greens, although I expect we'll use a bit of them, but it's going to be a lot of yellow green. And I just want to get that surface in and get some colour onto it. So the first bit of the, you know, I'm not even really worrying about, I'm not thinking about light or shadow or anything, it's just, I just want to get some green onto the surface. So the first bit is really going to be like painting the house. It's just going to be slapping it on as much as we can manage. And just so I can get some background in and see how that paper is sort of moving. And this could be a good space to use your sponge because um, you can get even more paint on it. So let's try that. Let's, as I've um, bigged up the, the sponge, let's get some paint on my sponge and just get that onto the surface. So at the moment I'm using it to put paint onto the surface rather than take it off. Um, but just, but you can see already how some of these textures that I'm going to get are going to be really good to work with later. So I'm just kind of putting down the surface and I've got a big jar of water today and that means that it doesn't quite fit onto my workspace so it's awkward to get to which I didn't think about until now. But never mind, we will carry on. So let's just get all this sort of green onto my surface and I want something to work with, something that's going to I'm starting to get some nice kind of runs appearing through and, and, and this sort of blotchiness, which is kind of already mimicking the pattern that the, the, light, the um, lichen is giving us. So it's already giving us some sort of surface to work on just to sort of break that up. Right, so I've got a basic, um, just got my basic kind of green in. And we can see there's now a background to work in. So, and I find that if you've got something like this, I'm just going to have to close my curtain a bit, I think, because it's the, the light is shining off that um, paint a bit. It's very difficult to get it so you can see it how I can see it. And I end up painting in sort of almost darkness, ridiculously. I think that once, if you've got a subject like, like this that you're slightly concerned about or it feels slightly daunting, if you can get in there and get something on the surface so that you're not dealing with the white page because the white page is quite anxiety making anyway because you've got to sort of go in there and destroy that fantastic whiteness with your brush marks and you know it can be quite so this is always my theory around why I like you guys can do your best drawings on crappy bits of paper because you, you don't worry about what you're doing so now looking at this I want to start with some areas of I am going to start trying to see it in kind of big areas of shadow so I'm not worrying about proportion too much at the moment. I'm just saying that there's a dark patch up here and I just want to get that in. I'm going to alter it. It's not going to be set, although this is a statue, this bit is definitely not set in stone. To get that darker, I think I'm going to add a little bit of my umber into that green to get that. As now I see it, that's still quite a bright green. So I'm going to go back in and mix some umber with that and um, just get that patch of dark in and we're going to let everything run we're going to let it sort of move and get quite wet on the side area here there's a darkness here as well so that's a similar kind of tone so that's sort of I suppose the statue's ear kind of roughly coming in there and 
my paper isn't the same quite profile format as the image so I'm just going to kind of let it fade off into greenness around the edges then there's this sort of um, but like a, almost like a parallelogram here on the side where you can see um, you know one of those shapes that in school maths you would have to find the area of you know and be really awkward and annoying sort of like that at the side just sort of like and then coming across on this side sort of at the same sort of level is a triangle it's a big sweep of shade kind of coming in here and I'm going to mix up some more going to mix up some more paint now so I'm just mixing my olivey green again with my umber just to bring that sort of triangle in and I'm really trying to see the shape of that triangle I'm not thinking of it as I'm not thinking of the, the statue I'm thinking of that space next to it I want to kind of get that space in and none of these you should see none of these marks as being permanent none of them are you know exactly where they're going to end up it's just to get something down so we've got something we can work on so again this is why I love my square brushes because I can slice a line in like that and then I can pull it and soften it into shadow straight away with that with the broad bristle of it then I can see there's sort of an area of darkness kind of coming under here where the sort of shadow of the chin is coming so again you can see how as we're just sort of modeling we're just looking at the shadow areas and not thinking about the actual face. The face is starting to come out of that greenness. Now, I this sort of, we've got, then got this sort of shadow on this sort of side here. So I'm going to just get some darkness in roughly around where I'm seeing that shape. It's sort of, um, it's like a sort of arrow, isn't it? Like it's, you can see this sort of, I need to mix a bit more paint up. Um, you can see it's like a sort of, like a swallow shape, really, which is, which we know is where the eye is, but it's, um, you've got a curve kind of under here and then another curve on top and sort of like a boomerang or batarang sort of shape in there and then if I come across this side I'm seeing a line somewhere in there and a similar kind of echoing shape around there but keep it quite light because it's not there's not really features you know we're not going to see you know, it's very sort of discrete features they're very sort of worn away so I'm now going to get some more darkness into that. If I look, if I squint at it and I look at it, there's a tight, I can just about see the mouth kind of coming through here, but it's not as dark as the other areas. So I'm not going to worry. It sort of has this sort of very sort of ghosty kind of quality anyway. And there's some dark line um, sort of with the ear, that ear bit now needs to come a bit darker. And then there's kind of a step of darkness up here. And then this darkness kind of comes in somewhere around there and if when you step back from it and you think well I'm not seeing at the face where I want it to you can always go in and suck out some of the color with your tissue and then have another go at sort of altering it but well, you might find that if you need to drop the features or change them around paint the new ones on first because then you can see right if this eye needs to come lower I'll paint it lower and then make take out the bit I don't want because if I take it out first I then can have, run the risk of putting it straight back in where I didn't want it to be so this shape here, I think there's a sort of, there's a bit more area of sort of shadow there and a sort of shortness. Oh, we've, everyone's a critic this morning. Look, I'm getting heckled from the sidelines. And uh, uh, this is fine, don't worry, it's sweet. Then this line through here, this is now, I think, too sharp. I think I need to slightly um, soften that curve maybe a little bit and bring that around there. And let's get that let's get that darker kind of appearing in here so I can use that darkness to re just slightly remodel the shape of the face on that side. I think the statue originally is probably sort of like meant to be a fairly young face, like a sort of childish face, child's face. So I think it has got quite soft. It's not, not a sort of adult angel. I know angels technically don't really have a gender, but you know, they often do look quite feminine. Um, so I think it's, you know, as opposed to being a young woman, I think it's more like a, a young girl or a boy. So I'm just, again, just going back around and visiting those kind of areas of shadow, just to kind of see where they are there. And so this is, as I always sort of say, this is our drawing, so we can create the character that we want in this face. Um, if I look at the line of this shadow here underneath the chin, it's kind of coming in the line with that sort of triangular point in there. So I can just kind of bring that shape in and having the edge of the brush like this allows me to kind of pull some shadow and shape through the bottom and just sort of it sort of like starts to see almost like sort of um, hashed 
like sort of cross hatching hash lines like that but with the um with the end of the brush rather than using a pen and i'm going to come in and again just build some up in sort of around there and then in this eye area here this needs to get darker and now seeing this needs to be darker and more kind of defined when i finish putting this shadow in the next thing i'm going to be doing really is trying to get the areas of yellow into the face um so yes let's get this eye section here darker i might just have to sort of dab the color in to get it to build up i can see i'm going to have to revisit it it's still not really dark enough but um also, as the paint dries, it's going to lighten up. So, but I just want to sort of soften and get that line in of that sort of eye there. And then this brow line here, I think is quite important on this side. So let's just kind of get that in as an arc. Um, take the darkness, put the brush flat on the paper there and just bring it back to kind of give me that sort of square of shadow. And then I've got to take that line underneath that sort of on there. And then I can soften that a bit so it's not too... Um, direct. The nose kind of disappears off completely so there's not really a lot to do with the nose at the moment. I'm just going to have to sort of get a hint of sort of black coming in there and shadow. Now I haven't got this side of the face here so I'm going to have to kind of slightly imagine what's going on here. You can just stop your picture there if you're not sure and it might sort of something might occur to you where you want to finish it later and then this because this shadow here this needs to come more over this side. I've got it too far into the forehead so I need to get that a bit darker kind of up there and get this sort of it's obviously the the statue has some kind of halo or headdress on and it's casting a really big dark shadow here so let's increase um, the darkness on that one and kind of get that and I quite like it when my brush does that splitting thing because then it gives me kind of Again, a sort of another way of getting a texture in the line and just adds a bit more surface in. I think this side, I've got it a little bit too, I think she's a bit puffy on this side, so I can just now come back with that dark and sort of shape it a bit more, bring it off into the sides and into the green, um, like that. So initially, that's kind of where I'm going with the large brush stroke. So you should have, be able to kind of map in and we should see a kind of face form in that although we're not really painting the face all the time what we're trying to do is just try to see the shadows as areas of darkness and then use them as almost as like as if they're a, um, a pattern now i'm now going to try and get some yellow in there so i'm going to mix myself up i need to clean a brush because i've made it all a bit greeny now so i'm going to use um, a bright yellow but there's quite a lot of warmth in that yellow so i'm going to put a little bit of the orangey tone into it to kind of get to see how this comes out it may disappear off into the background but we'll see and what I'm trying to do now is kind of dabbing motion so I'm not trying to do um, um, sweeping brush strokes it's all going to be very much placing the brush on and kind of pushing the pigment out of it and I think I'm going to have to use quite a dry pigment here so not too much water at all um, maybe just like a real sort of dryness to kind of get this slightly crusty. And if it runs down, I'm quite happy with it running because it, it's just adding surface to it. This cheek here is much, the strongest sort of yellow area is kind of coming in here. And now I've got this down, I'm seeing, definitely want to get some more orange into that because it's, it's really quite a warm, um, you know, quite a definite orange yellow. It's not a greeny yellow. It's got quite a lot of contrast in it. So I can start padding in some orange, some this orangey yellow coming through here. It seems to concentrate underneath this dark area as well here. So there's quite a bit of it coming in there. And then it comes back round on this side and it's got quite a light here. And I think I need, I need to take some darkness off this side. It's too dark on this corner. So I'm gonna see if I can lift some of that paint off there just to sort of give me a better chance of getting um, my orangey yellow tone coming through in here and getting that sort of brighter. We'll be working on that later with our pen to kind of really get some texture into it and, and some light. But I want to sort of get this yellow feeling here. Now this area here, can you see the way I've got this line? I think I've exaggerated the twist on this mouth. It actually needs to come lower so I'm going to use that yellow to kind of 
get rid of that a little bit and think about where that yellow comes just to sort of help model that face round and soften get some more yellow working into this area here and under the neck here obviously it's out of focus but there's a lot of let me just slightly tilt my camera down there's a lot of this really quite strong golden orangey yellow color into the bottom half of the neck almost as if it's got like a a necklace or a collar of this sort of yellow color and I can bring that now into here again I'm using just these sort of dabbing square marks because I'm thinking always about the texture and that this is such a textured piece it's not there's no smoothness in here it's not sort of a polished statue at all we've got to do all the air around the mouth here is going to have loads of texture into it so at the moment I'm just trying to see the areas of color this area here this is a really spring green isn't it so I think I'm going to come back in with some quite bright green and put that in and then if it's too bright which it is at the moment I'm going to then add some water to the surface and then pull that off with tissue so that I kind of let some of the paper come back through but I'm leaving some of that intense green colour because we can always deaden down the colours later but I think it's good to get them in and get them in bright. The chin area is going to be quite tricky because I think I've got, um, I think it needs to be elongated a bit. I think I'm going to cut the chin off a bit. So I'm going to mix up um, a green and yellow because it's this sort of real apple kind of colour in here. And I want to get that coming a little bit lower here with the sort of the texture kind of round the mouth area and into that bottom lip. And I can bring some green now into that space there that I've left. And up into this brow. I think I want to bring it up into that brow section. So I'm getting a kind of um, angle of it through. Now I'd like to start getting some pen work on here quite quickly. Because I wanted to get a bit more definition into um, the shapes and the images that I'm getting on here I don't want to keep it looking too soft and smoky because it's it's not actually a, although it's very textured it's a quite hard texture it's not really a soft um, super soft smoke image um, so I just want to slightly knock the texture back on that at the moment and yes yeah, so I'm just seeing this brow line through here that needs to come with some green and yellow through there but I'm debating at the moment in the back of my head while I'm doing this which because I don't think I want to go straight in with black I think that's going to be too hard and then if I I probably have got other pens I can use and I think oh and I haven't told you to have other pens ready so you might not be able to do the same stage as me um, but yeah I'm just sort of like wanting to bring that lighter green in here and then I'm kind of just trying to see the kind of overall shape that it's got um, so I think what I'm going to do is I am going to use some black. But I'm going to keep it really sort of to the dark areas. I'd quite like I have got um, some green brush pens, which are um, just usual sort of like, but they have like a brush tip. So it's a little bit like my um, black brush pen, but it's it's a, a not not a refillable one. So I'm going to try some of these on the surface and just see what they're doing, um, so I can get a bit more control I might not like them I might like them um, if you've got a brush pen if you've got um, if you haven't got a brush pen then I think maybe we should go into using um, like a, a watercolor brush with a thin a thinner brush to, so we can sort of get some definition into some of these shapes um, because I think that's what we're all going to have I'm not this is all right but it's not as good as I think a brush would be so I'm going to go to a brush Let's go for just quite a round sort of brush. And I want to get a sort of khaki kind of colour. And I think I need to get some a bit more definition into some of these areas so I can start building in some of the texture. So I'm going for my bright spring green, but I'm immediately knocking it back with some umber. So it should be an olivey kind of colour that I can work in. Right, okay, so looking at this area here, I think I want to bring the mouth in, starting to get some texture into the sort of that sort of cracking in the kind of lips 
and always think exaggerate 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 what you see in front of you because you can always soften it down and make it disappear it down but if you get too muddy it's kind of hard to bring it back from that so I want almost like using it as if I'm sketching it with a pencil just to sort of um, see where that little break in line comes up that's sort of just below the nostril so that helps me kind of get that nostril in the right sort of area and then we've got this very dark eye line here um, so yes yeah, so almost just think of it as drawing with a wet pencil rather than think of it as using it as a brush at the moment um, I'm going to cross hatch in some that darkness around the eyes get that sort of working I think I need to bring this dark line just down a little bit I've slightly got that too um, see this is slightly too high so I actually want to bring this shadow area down here so having that still on the painting don't try and get rid of it just try and work with it so you can see where you want to go in comparison to where you were and if I come back down here I can start to get um, this if I look at across here at the sort of shadow where it starts this very dark shadow starts just above the line of that bottom eyelid there so I want to start this dark shadow just slightly above that and then bring it up in sort of little sharp marks to kind of get that in just mix up a little bit more paint and then on this side here I've got this sort of slant of the eye brow coming through there and then a little bit of shadow in there and then this sort of dark line and then I'm going to come up to this area. This, this has got to be shaded in here. This has got to be dark. So I want to come in and get this area much darker. And then if I'm looking down here, I've got my chin. This I still need to get this. I want to define this cheek a bit better. It's a bit soft on this side, a bit wishy-washy. Um, so I'm going to come down and bring that in stronger. I think that's getting better as to where the sort of shape is just to sort of pull that darkness and come down to that contrast point there. Yes, okay, so I'm feeling a bit happy about that. I think the mouse actually still needs to come a bit longer. It's because it's a sort of slight angle. But you just have to keep looking and going, is this doing what I want it to do? Is this doing what I want it to do? And if it's not, where do I need to take it to to get it more into where I want it to be? It's just on, keep sort of like looking across and asking yourself those sort of questions. So let's bring the mouth area here is where we've got the most sort of texture. We've got a lot of kind of flaking texture on the kind of skin. Um, and then there's a lot of it on the brow here, which we haven't really got in yet. So let's get into this area up here. Let's start breaking this up with some line work because I want to start seeing that texture coming into that surface there. And at the moment, I'm not really trying to mimic the texture. I'm just trying to sort of decide where I want areas of texture to be so I'm not thinking about I'm going to come back in later with my pen work and actually really pick up on the, the sort of shapes that we're getting here but I just want to start breaking up the smoothness of this surface now start so that we're, we're not trying to keep it as a kind of in the moment it's like it's a jade statue isn't it? it looks like a sort of polished piece of jade or something and it's not really about that it's about um, trying to get that surface much more darker, much darker, and much more sort of broken up with these sort of, there's a kind of band of texture that kind of comes up there a bit, and then it works into that shadow. Um, and then there's a, like a hole in the sort of surface there, which I think is quite important to kind of get in. And then there's like another sort of dark shadow bit and coming in there and then I'm seeing there's such an area of light actually above this eye so I want to make sure I'm going to have to do that in, in, in definitely with my light pens to kind of increase this area of um, highlight here and then we're getting shadow up into this corner and we can keep the shadow around the face quite sort of smooth and um, because that has less texture because it's out of focus so when we come back to look at this area here, we can just darken them down with big sort of wet brushes because we want to get a bit of contrast in again when we start. See, look how this shadow here has disappeared as it's dried. I need to get it in again stronger and sort of darker. Um, but we want to, this, this can be soft. We want to keep this sort of soft and um, out of focus because then that gives us more focus to zoom in on. The, um, 
texture that we're getting on the actual face where it is in focus. Right, okay, so let's get back into doing some texture lines. It's starting to have quite a sort of fey-like quality. I think it's got, he's becoming sort of like a creature of the woods, you know, like Puck or something. I'm seeing this in my head. So now I've got a sort of darkish ochery green. So again, just to sort of break up the face, I want to get that texture in. So we're seeing, we're thinking surface, we're thinking, um, uh, not thinking smooth the whole time. Just to kind of, giving myself something to work with really, almost sort of like, it's quite daunting doing this because you're kind of like scribbling all over the surface and you think, well, what am I going to do with this? What am I, well, it's like setting yourself, I always find that by doing this, by again, by breaking up the surface, by not being straightforward about it, what you're actually doing is turning off the voice that's telling you the critical kind of voice inside your head and giving it a problem to focus on or giving it something to work around and having something to work around and to problem solve is always um, the, the, the thing, that, you know, it, the, the problem you're trying to solve is not I've got to make this look like this picture, but I've got to work out how I'm going to get around this surface that I've created for myself. I know that doesn't sound like it's something that different, but actually by doing that, you kind of, it allows you to focus on something almost outside of the whole image. It will sort of, I know it, it sounds like I'm being quite rambly at this point, but... Uh, it's a way of turning, of, of giving, your, if, you have your, if you have a problem to pick at and to work at that isn't the one you think you're doing, you often find that the solution to the main problem, you know, comes to you without you even noticing it, which is why, you know, if you're walking along and you're thinking about, you know, how, how to navigate a pathway so you don't fall over, and that's what your conscious brain is thinking about, and you're thinking about whether, what's the dog doing and, you know, this sort of thing, you'll suddenly find that really good ideas will come into your head sort of because your conscious brain is just being distracted with all this sort of stuff, which is why one always gets great ideas when you're just about to go to bed or when you're in the shower or when you're walking the dog or doing the washing up because you've got space, that little headspace that those mundane activities give you to uh, let some ideas sneak around the corners. If you try and, if you ever sort of go, right, I'm going to sit down now and I'm going to solve this problem that's been bothering me for ages, you can guarantee that you will end up thinking about walking the dog and doing the dishes. So, and the problem won't, won't be solved. It's distraction technique. So, and this is what I'm doing now, I suppose, is just kind of giving myself stuff to work with and distracting myself by doing something, you know, tipping up, doing something that my rational brain is not expecting to have to deal with. And then it gets annoyed at me and I can sneak round it, hopefully. That's my plan. Right. So I've got some quite a lot of texture going on here. I want to get back into sort of putting some texture on with yellow colours now. I'm quite tempted to get some, um, some acrylic paint pens in sort of a range of colours, really. But I want to see this cheek here, I think, needs to come a lot brighter. I need to get some light in that. So to do that, what I'm going to do is get my white acrylic pen and do some texturing in the pen first and then give it a couple of minutes to dry. And then I'm going to go back in with uh, the yellow over the top to give it a yellow tone. So this edge here, I'm going to get my acrylic pen and start working, again, thinking of bringing light into that surface. And I'm just still really quite big texture marks because I want to just establish the surface. I can always go back and refine and refine later. You, as I always say, you've got to think of it as a kind of wedge of marks. The first marks you put on are always the biggest. This line here, this seems to be really important to get that in, to get that sort of edge of shadow, that edge of highlight, sorry, against that very shadowed eye area. I feel that I need to really establish that. And again, on the nose section here, let's scribble in um, some lines work here and bring that in my paper texture is having great fun with this pen this eye here look where you've got that dark there's a really strong again sort of light area of green and if I put the white down I can always go back later and paint over the top and um, give it a, a tint that's I'm more that, you know into these sort of green colors I might not even need to I might find that that's the it, it does tend to allow some of the paint color through and I've got quite wet paper at the moment, so it can probably will probably go on better when it's a bit drier. 
but that's just sort of bringing, um, establishing these areas of light where I want them and then um, working against those sort of darker marks, working into those a bit more. And then we can have a look back. There seems to be quite a sort of like an area of lightness right sort of on this area here at the top. I can see a sort of shape of white. So I want to sort of establish the side where that is. And where I've got this dark here, I can come in and sort of work on the brow area to get those edges working. I just sort of bring those here and then some sort of light here. I can and the lip area here there's quite a lot of clearly got the, I got get the urge to give them some um, lip style at this point because their lips look really cracked and sort of dry around there but that's just starting to help give some fundamental and sort of give some uh, areas of light the highlight onto the piece and so I can start to see how it's modeling out against the darkness that I've got in there yeah, I definitely want to put some, definitely work on the edge. The surface of the paper is breaking up, which is quite interesting. Um, which is one of those interesting things where you kind of go, oh, I really wasn't expecting that to happen. <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting effect that I'm going to have to work out how to work with. Right, so I'm thinking that I still want to now get some really more, some more punch into power in some of these sort of shadow areas. Like here on this side, I'm still thinking this is a bit too um, wibbly wobbly. So I'm going to, I am going to get my black pen now and I want to really sharpen that face line up and I can always work over the top of this in green so again I can sort of soften its blackness by going in with sort of green lines but I'm going to then bring some more definition into the shadow that I've got here and if we're using lines like this it's still you know like a sort of cross hatching it's still leaving these sort of areas in and again I'm going to soften just and I, um, soften. I'm going to darken up under that chin as well just to bring that shape in and into um, round this cheek here because I want the face to be quite strong against the background so I want to darken up my areas of shadow and I'm just using these cross hatching quite abstract kind of lines because I'm still trying to get across texture just want to establish a little bit on that mouth area and into that cracking section that's sort of coming up around there and into that chin just using these lines and I'm starting to think now about some of the shapes that I'm seeing you're going to get almost like leaf shapes or tiered shapes kind of coming into that sort of surface so where you get the nose sort of area in here there's just like a little edge then around it of um, shape so I'm starting to think about the line that I'm using so it's not just a completely random scribble it's maybe starting to um, define some of these almost like little I keep thinking little cabbage leaves kind of texture just sort of seeing little half moon and areas coming through and like on this cheek here I can see like a little um, like a little uh, leaf like it like a, that sort of shape I can't think of the word for that I keep wanting to say it's a little bit like a saddle but it's got that sort of actual um, texture through and then let's get into the eye let's get that really much darker because again I've got that white line so that I'm working to the line that I've got there just to sort of really push that darkness and um, not using flat colouring or shading at all just trying to sort of scribble and see some of those sort of shapes coming in and where I've got this brow here I can see this sort of edge again where the, the lichen on top just has that light quality so I can um, define a little bit of shape into that shading and I'm going to punch that quite dark here but then I can start thinking about little tiny almost just like a dot pattern on the surface just to sort of start giving uh, seeing the little lichens sort of structure as like little individual pieces casting its sort of shadow down and that's starting to give that real sort of texture let's get up into this area here that's really dark so I can bring some larger 
there's that white section or sort of pale section that I've identified and then we can start bringing some larger shapes into that and seeing these as sort of all that um, scribbly kind of dotty kind of texture. Let me just tilt the camera up. So we're seeing, so that, then there's, there's quite a strong, if you start seeing this almost like a sort of pattern, there's an area here where I've got um, a, a slightly smoother area, which I've sort of isolated already in the paint. And then there's a little sort of patch. And then above that, it's a very thin little sort of walkway. And then there's a pool of shadow kind of back in that. And again, coming down into the eye across there, there's um, that very dark line sort of where the um, lashes, I suppose, if it had lashes would be. And then there's that strong curve of darkness through there. And then that line starts to break up and it starts to become um, more, into, more into texture, more into kind of surface. And um, then up above it here, I can see there's sort of like little collections of areas of shadow that are just sort of trying to see, pick those out now on a much smaller scale, trying to see where the shad what the shadow is doing as if it was a surface pattern almost. And there's like another that area of darkness kind of coming through there and um, just coming off that edge and there's like a little trail of it coming up here. This cheek edge here, we can get that darker, I can build some areas of shadow. Now seeing this, I'm kind of liking but the black, but some of the black, I need to sort of have something that's going to blend into that black that's not going to be quite as hard a colour. So this is where some greens and some I want to get some dark green and I'm like if I had if I had a pen that was dark green like this that would be exactly what I'd be using right now but I don't they don't make it so I don't have it otherwise I would definitely have it so I'm going to then go back into uh, my smaller brush and I'm just wondering if I've got a dark green ink I'm going to try some dark green ink so this is like a, a Lumitex Luminex darkest green and if you haven't got dark green ink to hand, then it's back into quite a thick watercolour, not too much water, lots of pigment, because you're going to use it with a similar kind of um, dabbing motion. I wonder if that's too bright a green. I think it might be a little bit on the bright side. Um, but I think I can use it through some of it coming up here, and then I might have to go over it with some watercolour just to kind of knock it back a bit, because I think it might be a bit too day glow but we'll see. Um, so again just sort of trying to find the little textured surfaces and the sort of um, leaf kind of forms in the in the um, the paper, in the paper, in the lichen, just kind of getting some and I'm working quite close to the black areas to kind of on top of them and then kind of sort of soften them out so by putting the paint or the ink over the top we're slightly blending the black into take slightly, slightly um, fading off the darkness a little bit and I can just pull these sort of up and around and start looking again on here there's some sort of areas of shadow and I can get a little bit more into the, just under here that's not the black shadow but just um, the intermediate kind of shadow just to start sort of seeing those shapes into there just sort of in between the black and the next layer of colour but still keeping my brush movements really sort of jagged and flicky and I'm not no sweeping going on just definitely keeping that moving across the surface, dotting and dashing, so that all the time, although I'm adding shade, I'm also adding texture. So it's not about, it's not about trying to make it smooth, it's always about trying to get it to come, to feel rough to the touch. And let's get into that mouth area and just introduce it. Where you get the sort of text you get these very sort of strong areas of white of, of light you can see sort of highlighting around them so by sort of going 
darker in like on this under lip here I can come in a bit darker and trying to get so that I, I'm leaving the light bits to stand out much more strongly so they become like an edge and just working around so leaving where I've got this sort of U shape here leaving that mostly sort of bright but then working some others kind of around it and just trying to see it's almost like sort of scale patterns and then where that chin comes there there's I can define that edge and that can sort of fade down into the darkness underneath a bit. And I think this eye is looking a little bit too full. I think it actually needs to, I need to sort of get more of a um, softness into it to sort of like take that edge back so it's not too bulbous. And I think what I'm going to do now is get some brown. I think I want to get some brown to kind of keep, get the shadow, to get sort of into the yellower tones on some of those shadows. There's so much more surface I want to get on. So I'm going to, um, the burnt sienna, those kind of colour is what I'm after now. Um, to, again, work on top of where I've got that green and move that across the surface, move it into... the darkness. I'm going to need to get some more yellow. I think it's, I'm going to get my yellow ink in a bit and definitely get some ink into the surface to kind of increase the vibrance of those tones and colours, that yellow that's on here. But I'm just using the dark, that sort of dark sienna tone. I wanted to hopefully get some texture up into the brow. Yeah, I'm seeing that I want to get more onto the surface, so I think I think it may be time to try a bit of sponging. I'm going to find a bit of sponge and see if I can get a bit with quite a hard edge to it. And I'm going to um, get some yellow. I want to get into my yellow colour, so I've got to get quite a lot of yellow. I'm almost just dip, taking it straight out of the pan, so I'm just with a wet sponge going into the pan. So you can see my sponge has got quite a lot of this yellow on it. So let's see if that's going to help to bring that surface up a bit. Let's get some more of those. And if you keep turning as you dab, so you're not, um, you're not uh, getting a repeated shape. You don't want to get like, um, you're not doing potato prints. So you're not trying to, to get the shape of the sponge. You just want to get that texture. So it's a kind of lift up and uh, push down, lift up kind of motion. And that's giving me, yes, that's starting to give me some texture, which is, I'm really liking that sort of on the side there. And there's a little bit more of it to come in. And if I go over the white areas where I've drawn with the white pen, that should, the white pen should, as they say in the painting trade, grin through and give me that extra oomph to that white, to the, to the yellow colour. So let's bring those in. I think I want to bring a little bit of this into... The nose section. The nose has got rather abandoned. It's got rather lost because we're not quite sure what to do with it because noses are awkward like that. They're always quite an awkward thing to paint. So let's get some of these yellow tones onto it. And then up here, we can get some yellow into that that surface up here. That's working much better for me to see that surface coming out with the paint just sort of through into there. And up the top, I want to get up the top here. There's quite a bright, there's quite a bright green tone. I maybe need to go for a slightly, uh, my slightly brighter, more of a green up here. And so we can always soften it back later. But just to come in, there's that white, that sort of um, shape there, isn't it, that we've got. So let's bring this brighter colour up here. Because it's really quite, the lichens, as they do have these in quite fantastic bright, 
light yellowy kind of tones to them and come in with some blending with the yellow on the sponge as well and this is giving me texture this is what I want to sort of work with and I can go back in later and work with the texture that I've got off the sponge so I'm I'm not sort of um, trying to work so much in the photograph I'm trying to see what the sponge has given me and use that as my texture so at the moment if we just focus on getting the texture onto where we want it and then later we can use the texture that's there as our guide and I'm quite liking when I'm coming back over that black line that I've done with the pen with sponging watercolour it is just coming over the surface but it's not disappearing it because it's a black but it's just softening it a bit and it's giving it putting some more texture onto it so I'm quite enjoying that effect so I'm going to keep on with that and not be worried about going over the sort of pen lines that I've got in the first place and let's get some more worked up into this corner here and just take a step back and see yeah and I'm sort of getting I'm feeling that a lot more I want to get some more into the, the area down here at the bottom so I want to get some you know, slightly dampen my sponge again and bring this sort of yellow tone into this bottom area and over that sort of green tone as well to bring some yellow into it and I'm quite enjoying where this is going it's quite nice to sort of like and we're kind of like going big small big small on it like the focus of our mark making which um, you know is another way of approaching it there needs to be some more yellow in this sort of lip area here coming through onto and onto this chin shape up here I want to get that more intense just on this side of the face here and this side of the face it's got I think this is where the light is definitely hitting it so you want to get some more um, intensity into that edge okay now I'm thinking let's try this sponge technique because I'm getting and this seems to be working for me now that we've got the other black pen is let's get some dark umbery tones and get into those sort of dark areas with the with the with the dark sponging so I'm going to go into what my yeah I've definitely got some umber I think or sort of some burnt sienna again on this sort of color here so then I can work those into those sort of dark areas of shadow I'm going to go back in and add some black onto that and get it really quite dark yeah so really lots of let's get some more into where I've got those line that line work let's get into that with some oh, just tilt the camera up see that's just getting that and we have started to lay down that fundamental shadow on it so let's go back and work on where we've got those shadows where we've mapped them in and now we can do some more let's up the volume on that sort of area so we can really push these shadows back with this dark sponge well, this is getting quite exciting I'm quite enjoying this now <laughs> it's, it's starting to I think it's just pushing these shadows back and getting just working with these very textured items I was very tempted to get some sea salt and do the sea salt trick on this one but I think that would have been a different sort of surface and I think this is working and then so let's do the same on this side let's keep it going I'm managing to get the cord of my headphones is right in my paint I'll keep trying to buy cordless headphones to work with this because I'm sort of tethered to my laptop and I've realized my poor old laptop is so out of date it can't see them anymore it's sort of like it's like an old man shouting the dark, sort of going, hello, hello, is there someone there? So it has to have a plug-in one, I'm afraid. So I'm going to remain tethered to my, my cable, getting gradually paintier and paintier as time goes on. Yeah, and then let's take that back in there and bring that up. So we can, we've already, we're just using the areas of shadow that we've already identified, that we've already worked out for ourselves, so we know where they are. So we're just working with the marks that we've got, but we're just exaggerating them. 
So wherever you've already identified, there needs to be some more shadow under there. And remember, when you're trying to get areas of light, if you can't go lighter in your highlights, you have to go darker around the rest of your um, highlight areas. So I'm going to come in and work on this area here just to sort of blend that, that shadow in. And I think this whole bit here needs to go a little bit darker. But you can sort of press the sponge down and then sort of come back and consider where you want to go next. Uh, um, you don't have to sort of, you know, this is a good thing, but you can press a bit down and then come back and press a bit more. Right, so now I'm thinking a little bit of more shadow kind of needs to come into where we've got this texture in here. I want to get a bit more of a green tone into it. So let's use my... Um, brighter green again but just to with a little bit of darkness and bring that section in that green out from the eye a bit more and onto that over that yellow of the eye there so this area this brow, brow ridge is standing out quite nicely up here um, there's some green that needs to come into these sort of areas. I think we need to get a bit of this texture happening kind of up there. Now I'd quite like to attempt to do some sponging in ink because again it's like a different surface so I'm going to try that just to see how it comes out. Oh, I think I want to put a little bit of shadow into this area here. Let's get that a bit darker before I get to my ink. I've never tried sponging with ink before so it should be interesting. Might be a bit messy. Um, Yes, yeah, so I just want to push that area and push that back a little bit on that top lip, I think. If we go too hard on this shadow, we can always do our thing of letting it dry a bit and then going back in with a white pen to bring out, which is probably what I'm going to do regardless, just to kind of get more surface coming into it and being able to really concentrate on getting the delicate shadow out. I don't know how much of that I'll manage to do in this session because the paper is quite wet and I think it would be beneficial to let it dry um, because my paper this is very thick paper so it tends to keep the wet for much longer than the finer paper does the, the smoother texture paper does because it just holds on to it a bit more but um, if I do go back and, uh, and if I decide that we, I will be going in and doing more work on the surface I will let you have um, scans of it sort of at this stage and a bit further on as well so you can see kind of what I'm doing but keeping the sponge quite dry and just putting in and who knew the humble dish sponge could achieve such fantastic surface <laughs> hurrah for dish sponges never throw them away and we can bring into there and right so I'm going to now try I'm going to darken that bit I went to to um went too um, hard with that so I'm just going to fuzz that a little bit that's better just give it some texture and I found that it's it's really good for sort of it does actually slightly blend this pen because it's slightly mashing up the surface so I'm going to just slightly soften that out and I'm getting some really good surface here that's um interesting uh, right okay so I'm going to try if it goes hideously wrong well it's all right because it's my painting it's not like you were, um, um, let me show us. Oh, I've got this thing now, but can I reach my headphones far enough to grab my yellow ink? I'm having to very carefully inch. It's like I have to reaching for it blind. Yes, here we go. So <laughs> I've got some yellow ink here. So it's like acrylic ink. It's really um, actually a really sort of watered down acrylic paint rather than um, ink in the same sort of way. But it's it does have quite a good strong surface, uh, strong surface covering capacity. And I'm going to put a little bit of it in my, um, I'm going to pour a little bit of it out into my palette and then see if I can see what that does. It's quite liquid compared to acrylic paint. It's obviously very runny because it's fine enough to go through a pen nib. So I'm going to, hopefully this is going to be like a kind of highlighting material medium. Again, if it's too day glow, we can always knock it back, but I can come in and use this now as a highlighting agent and I think we are seeing that I think that is working so I want to get some on that eyelid 
but it's just using the shape of the sponge and bringing in some highlights with it and some yes yeah 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 I'm just wondering whether if you've got some I would get it water it down a bit so it's not straight out the tube you know I should mix it up with some water and um, keep it get it quite light yeah and sponge it let's go for that definitely if you have got acrylic paints or gouache that's just that slightly thicker medium um, and then you could water that it sounds weird to have a thicker medium then water it down but just to do that and then give that sort of a go so it's going over this sort of surface that we've laid down yeah go for it I think that should work um, just sort of in fact if I've got some I don't know if I've got any acrylic paints to hand um, I should I would give it a go and see Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think find any sort of, I mean, I try all sorts of pens. I, at the moment, I'm doing a piece based on foxes and I'm using some really cheap and cheerful gel pens. You know, they're not, they're not in any way posh art pens at all. They're actually working really well. So um, I think you just have to experiment. I've, and I think you might have to let the paper dry a bit. I'm just, I've just got a brighter green now. I've got a bright green ink. Like an apple green. Um, sorry, just like, so that's why the colours changed. So you might need to um, experiment and just do a test. And the, it's probably going to work better with the papers going to be dry. But again, I just think try everything because you never know what kind of um, effects you might get. And sometimes the sort of cheap pens that run and things can actually create wonderful effects, like sort of uh, you know lovely sort of rainbow colours can bleed out of them, and they can give you a fantastic soft line. So I think it's you know, whatever you can get your hands on. I've seen some people do some incredible artwork that's drawn in ballpoint pen on paper, and it's just the way that they use it, you know. You know, you can always um, spend a fortune on art materials, um, but it's sometimes it's experiments and the things you didn't think are going to work are actually going to work out better. So I just want to get some light into that upper lip with the sort of dabbing. It is, isn't it? And I think it's just using these. I mean, sometimes, again, you know, um, instead of using brushes, you can try using things like feathers and cardboard and pieces that you've cut to shape. And they only last, like, for a few strokes, but they can give you something really interesting. Um, and it's just being open to sort of experimenting and um, trying to see, because you would obviously use it on whatever you're trying to do. You've got to think, well, well, so why am I using it on this piece? Well, we're using it on this piece because it's all about texture and because it's all about this surface. You know, if we were painting um, a, a, an actual person, we might not, though I mean, I'm not going to say don't use it because it could produce some really fantastic effects and be really, um, give it a real wonderful atmosphere. So, but you know, this is why, why we've come to this decision is that we're using this because of this texture. So we're sort of using it in res response to what we're trying to do and what our subject is and then I can add some more of this um, pale colour in sort of round here I'm still thinking I've kind of like left this bit this bit still looks a little bit kind of a, um, abandoned it's a bit sort of pale compared to the rest of it but I'm going to have to think about that I think I'm going to get some some yellow yes I am <laughs> So I've got fantastically green fingers now as well, in a sort of literal sense. <laughs> um, so I'm going to come in and just want to lift that eyelid again with that yellow and into the sort of cheek there. And I think there could be a case for a bit of white next, I think just to get some of these very white areas that are sort of very pale green, because the white should um, um, let the colours show through a bit, so it won't be dead white, I hope. Um, I mean, what I want to do really is I'm going to leave this, have to leave this to dry or, you know, give it a good ironing to, and then go back in with some pen to work on top of it. I yeah, I love, oh, <laughs> yeah, no, I iron the, I don't mean, you know, trust me, as my husband will tell you, I rarely do iron clothes. That's always his department. But um, um, I often iron the paper when it's, when it's dried, it's, it's got a very buckled surface. You put it between, you put it between, um, two pieces of plain paper and press it with a dry iron no steam 
and that really sort of smooths it out again. Okay. Uh, that's uh, ironing boards are really useful in art studios. More artists should have ironing boards because they're always they're very handy as a temporary table. And um, but so I've ironed all sorts of artworks to save them from being too crinkly. It doesn't work on tracing paper, but as long as you put, put something between your work, and you, you iron, ideally put it face down, so the good side down on some paper, and then um, yeah. iron and put another piece on top and then iron that side. Uh, but it's really handy for taking out the wrinkles. That's all right. Right, so that has got a lot more surface to it, and I'm much more happy with that kind of surface um, and what's going on here. As I said, I really want to get in with some pens now and sort of like get some more detail into it. But I think um, I'll give it a go, but we'll see how we get on. It might just be a bit too damp um, um, to sort of like, it might be a while for it to, it, the pen may tend to sort of disappear into the surface, but uh, I want to sort of work in, yeah, it's very sort of damp. So I think it's going to be, I'm going to have to use, I'm going to have to think about the shading first because the shading pens, uh, being darker will go on better than the white pen which I think will sort of bring it out later um, again I want one of my dark brush pens but they don't make them so I'm going to go back to some now some more controlled kind of paint work so in the last um, 20 minutes I'm going to mix up some dark some it's definitely brown tone so it's um, burnt umber uh, with a little bit of dark green in it and I'm going to use um, Where's the brush I want? I want a smallish brush, not absolutely micro fine, but um, oh, it's thrown itself on the floor. That's where it is. Um, yeah, so I'm going to then come in, and this is where I would start now thinking about um, the textures that I'm getting. So let me come in to the surface a bit closer. And what I'm kind of seeing now is almost looking away from the photograph and seeing the areas of texture and shadows that this sponging has given me and then I'm sort of pulling them out a bit so let me come a bit closer again if I can uh, there you go so where I've got this sort of mottled texture through the sponging I'm going to add shadow into that and enhance what's there so can you see what I'm doing is I'm not really looking at I'm not worrying too much about my source material at this point. I'm just seeing what the marks of the, the paint are giving me. And then I'm working on that and exaggerating that a little bit. And what I could do is once this paper is drier, I can go back in with my white ink and do the reverse, you know, work on the highlight areas um, a bit more. So that, but I, I'm kind of trying to be guided at this point by what's happening, what my paint has given me because I'm not trying to do a complete photograph. I am looking at it, from, you know, I'm not ignoring it, but I'm trying to find the nearest to what I want to do with the marks and things that are already here on the surface. Um, so it's like so looking backwards and forwards between the two and trying to see where they are and see what I've got to work with. And just hoping to then give that a bit more surface and a bit more of this amazing lichen. I hope no one ever cleans this statue. Wouldn't that be a terrible crime if someone did that? <laughs> There's some absolutely... I think there is this sort of quality. I mean, because statues are kind of, um, you know, everlasting and yes, also sort of, but also respond to the environment, which I think makes them sort of, they become part of... Um, what's around them and they have this sort of they always have this slightly melancholy air I think of um because they are kind of what gets left behind um they're very evocative and obviously because a lot of them are memorial pieces so they might be um for someone's departed loved one presumably somebody with a bit of money that could afford to um uh, put up a statue but I'm slightly reminded, I don't know if anyone ever remembers that episode of Only Fools and Horses where they go to see Dell and Rodney's mum and he's got this enormous, he's built this sort of giant memorial to her all out of fibreglass statues. So, so they're all kind of and very sort of pristine and, and you know, like a sort of, it's like a sort of enormous, because he's always, you know, they're very attached to her memory, aren't they? And it's sort of like, it's enormous. 
mausoleum like the size and then and then they go and f he wants to freshen it up so he ends up painting in paint which turns out to be day glow so it glows in the dark so <laughs> the whole thing lights up at night in a slightly um over the top way but yeah i'm just sort of, this is where you can come in and, and if you want to if you're kind of fine brush person you know this is where we can get the fine brushes in and just start working with the seeing that the paint that's there and sort of working around the shapes that we've got just to bring more and more of this yeah and it's, it has a feeling like doesn't it of, of a sort of green man as well that sort of spirit forest spirit i think you know that which i think is quite nice they say it does have quite a fairy like quality i mean japan in japan often in their gardens they use moss as a ground cover instead of grass and i i, I yearn to have a moss garden it's so it's so velvety looking and so beautiful and you know it never grows where i want it to in my garden it's a sort of lifelong struggle but um it always grows on my roof and then not on the ground, which is quite annoying. But you see, they have, and they grow it across all these beautiful boulders, so the whole surface is like an undulating green carpet of velvet. It's so beautiful um, and very meditative, and I think this has this kind of feel to it. Um, and also, the, I like the way it sort of, you know, is gradually being reclaimed by the natural world, but sort of made more beautiful at the same time, you know, made into something... Um, oh, I've gone off the page because I've got my I've forgotten I've got my camera in close so I'll come back up here because I'm under down the bottom um, but this is quite a gradual process and I think it's something that you can work on afterwards and I think what I'm wanting to do is I think, don't think it's where I've got this sort of shade in here I don't, might just get the pen to work a little bit on this eye where it's slightly drier um, it's just to then pick out no, it's not going to happen, I don't think. But I just start, oh, no, it's just going just very gently, just starting to work on some of these highlights around into that sort of texture. Um, just little sort of areas of it against that. And because it's a white, it will let the kind of colours come through. So it's not going to be a dead white. That just starts to, you see, I'm going to, I'm going to do a lot more of this, but when it's a bit, I need to get it to dry first on this paint because it's such a wet um, surface. So I can concentrate on the shadows for the moment and bring those in around it and it depends how how much you feel like spending hours on detail and you know it's one of those things you can really get lost in and I think if you're just sort of working with the paint that's there and seeing the little tiny shapes that your paint has given you it's really satisfying and very sort of meditative to keep going and working around these and it's worth just stepping back every now and again and sort of seeing how it's changing the sort of impact of the piece so it's not too uh, although it's fun working close don't get too stuck in it so that when you look up you realize you've sort of like gone off one because you still want to think about the areas of shadow so you still want to think about if this area is darker concentrate your fine marks of darkness into where there is shadow so that you're still working with the structure of the face that you've got underneath and um, using it to also model the shape of the stone and not just be, it's a balance between the two, it's not just about the surface, it's also about the, the, the shadow that that brings. Someone's got a delivery. <laughs> well, the last sort of six months everything's being delivered isn't it so like some days it looks like a departure lounge in our hallway the now stuff that's turned up in brown cardboard boxes because you can't get it and everything's you know it's sort of like having a cardboard fort sometimes down there so again I'm just going to work in some cracking into the surface around here and once this is dry I'm going to be very tempted to sort of go in with my very fine um, I can't remember what brand they are now but these this a, a lovely set I've got a lovely set of very fine terracotta coloured or sienna burnt sienna coloured fine liners and I can see if I can get once I've given this a good pressing and um, it's nice and smooth again or smooth it's going to be I can I think I should be going to use some of those in to kind of get some of this really fine cracking detail 
across the surface um, because they'll work really well for that. So I can get in, you know, you can go as small as you want to um, with this sort of detail. Yeah, it's really starting to sort of, you know, I think it's because we're using or trying to use, I say, what's, what's there and working with the shapes that we've got to sort of enhance them. Um, and again, it's always this thing of like having to start, off, you always have to start with a very big, the biggest perspective, the biggest brush marks, the biggest sort of movements and, and try and see the shape in its simplest forms. And then you go down and sort of in, increase your focus and uh, decrease your um, medium so that your brush point gets smaller and smaller and your pen point as you kind of go through and yes you can move up and down you can focus you can defocus as we did so it's not like it has to be it's not a rigid thing it should be flexible to what the image is asking you to do but um, that's where we're going with it really and you can be as sort of detailed as you want. I think this white line above the eye that I wanted is slightly too stripy. So now I can go in and just break it up a little bit, soften it so it's not quite so much like a like an eyeliner, sort of white eyeliner or makeup drawn on there. It's a bit hard. But um, I can just take a little bit off it work it round so I said I think it's because because I forgot we had a session before the half term break didn't we? we had a sort of slightly weird I was expecting it to go on another week so um, I have so enjoyed um, sharing these artworks with you and sort of seeing all that you've done um, your most creative group of people so it's been absolutely lovely seeing all your responses and I think you know I hope you've had as much fun out of it I know that if you've had as much fun out of it as I have, then you'll be doing all right. <laughs> I've really enjoyed these sessions. I've been getting up everyone and go, oh, it's Thursday, hurrah, you know, I can do, because uh, most, a lot of art is in this, that I have, the drawing I have to do is in the service of um, practicalities or commissions or college work. And it's just really lovely to get, to, just to kind of say, let's explore an interesting image together um, without, without having an agenda, you know. <laughs> other than, you know, let's see what we can do, which I think is, you know, and I think it's something I'm hoping to, uh, obviously I'm going to run some more of these classes. As the centres open up again, I shall be looking to run some face-to-face -face and online. The majority of my classes will always be online. And I think that's because certainly to have this level of, to be able to get this close to someone painting, you know, if we were doing this in a classroom, you'd all have to stand around behind me, like, you know, inch it all in a kind of group, and you'd never see it, the detail that, um, I put in or that you can see on the screen if you were an actual classroom it's a different kind of experience so I'm I'm going to keep the majority of them online and I think most people feel you know I think we, what we've really come to discover over these last 18 months or year I suppose it is maybe it feels like 18 months but um you know the good things that we've discovered let's the positives that we've discovered I think from this uh, pandemic are things like these classes which because they're suddenly so much more accessible when you don't have to travel in the rain and the dark and all that sort of stuff and if you're doing them of an evening you think oh I'll come home from work and I'm exhausted and then I think oh I don't really feel like going out again you know it's um to be able to sit and do this I think has been a real revelation for a lot of people um so I will continue with lots of them online and I will do a cup and I will see how um like I'm going to try and get some painting days on a Saturday like in some of the centres maybe on as well as but I'm going to keep most of it going online so maybe I will see some of you again which would be lovely but and I think what I'm and what I really want people to take away from this is it's just the freedom to you know often art materials become in a kind of bubble you know we sort of draw lines and say right this is one form of art painting this is another and I think what I really want that's why I always call these mixed media is because I'm sort of trying to use anything in service of the, the image and the construction of the image that I want you know I don't want to feel that I can't I feel being able to blend all these things together and use the use what each media gives you and explore it you know is, is very liberating and I think that's saying you know if, if you find a felt 
a kiddie pack of felt pens that works wonders for your particular image, then absolutely use them and absolutely try, you know, um, to see what effects you get with them because they all act differently and react differently. And it's just sort of being open to that experimentation and that um, idea that um, in that without sort of being, without worrying about it, you know, without being, you know, we do have... Exactly. It's sort of, you know, it's just finding the thing that does what you want it to do and or seeing what the thing does and then exploring that as an interesting, you know. I think I saw somebody who did the most wonderful, like, relief sculptures out of corrugated card. And what they did, I think I've mentioned it in the previous class, but what they did was sort of they run, you know, the way you can run a, a pencil or a knife down the corrugation and sort of half push it in. Well, they were able to control this sort of, and they used it almost like, um, like a sort of, Cross uh, like a, a a sketching line, and they were able to sort of pierce the surface at different depths, and then it would give this sort of shaded effect. And it, they were able to create whole like relief portraits of people just using cardboard and a, and a biro pushed in at different different gauge. I know it's amazing, and it's just sort of seemed like. And I've seen people do amazing masking tape pieces where they overlay masking tape incredibly accurately in layers upon layers then put a light behind it and it all comes to life and because of the different thicknesses it creates a an image that appears on this paper and it's just fascinating so thank you yeah no i'm so <laughs> well i'm hoping that the video is recorded and we'll have to see and then then you can sort of watch it back um Oh, okay. I'll have to send to the link again, but I think um, it it should be. Um, it's all it's a it's a it's not private or anything. It's all quite accessible. So, um, I have got a YouTube channel. I can't say that I keep it up on you know, but I'm starting to try and add more videos into it because um, you might be able to find it through that. Right. Oh no, we're going to have to stop very soon, aren't we? Um, So, yeah, so that's where I am now with it. So if I come back a little bit from the face, I think what I will definitely do is I'm going to leave this to dry a bit and then I'm going to go back and use some pen to kind of even bring more of this sort of detail into the face and into sort of some of the yellow areas. And um, I will give it an iron. And I just think, I think I still need to possibly sort this edge out here. This maybe just needs to have a little bit more darkness just coming in there. Just, to, yeah, because it was wandering a bit off into space. So I think I just need to firm up that edge along there. I think that's made quite a difference just doing that line actually. Yeah. So there we go. And then when I've done all that bit, I will, I'll scan this now and then I'll, I'll do some more work on it and send that through to you as well. Um, so, oh yes, it has recorded.